The Pocophone F1, a legend in itself and things got even better when this device got its first Oxygen OS port. The legacy continues, the legend lives on and things continue to be awesome for this particular device. What we are talking about? We are talking about the complete review of the latest Oxygen OS 11 port for the POCO F1. I would like to mention Xiaomi for making an amazing device and Oofgang for keeping it alive and keeping the spirits high. Before we get into the complete review, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video. In the description of each video, you will find the link to our Telegram community where you can join us and help us reach a thousand members. Last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kailash, let's get going. Now, first things first, to begin with, this is no ordinary review. People have been waiting for it. It's been three to six months there has been an update and finally it did arrive and boy does it deliver. Now, I'll tell you the truth. I flashed this yesterday night. The installation process was a little complicated so I made a video about that as well and I thought that, you know, if I have to review this bad boy, something that has so much going for it i'm going to use this as a personal phone despite having access to the k20 pro and the magnificent x3 pro so i removed my sim card put it in there and installed all the applications that i use so that you guys might get the most precise review that you deserve for this particular rom now in typical phone ops fashion we are going to start with the system info so as you see over here you go to settings you go to about phone, you can name it. So I've named it Poco Plus F7. The reason for that is because this build is based off the OnePlus 7 and that is the reason it says Snapdragon 855 over here. The security patch is that of the 1st of December. Can't really do much. These guys have been working for a long time on this build and that is the reason the security patch is so old. Now the build number is never gonna give you up Poco forever and that itself makes me feel great right now that is everything about the system info but something important over here the kernel version this build uses the shiva no name kernel and there is only one other kernel which is supported officially by oof gang that is the genos kernel all right now apart from this you have voice over lt voice over wi-fi video over lt all the works working exceptionally great and you know apart from this there are a few things that have been stripped down they have been removed that is dolby changing thermals have been removed so always on display has been removed now these things were something that is not used by a lot of people and they were you know maybe creating some problems less battery backup and stuff like that so you know the devs got rid of it now when you talk about this build you see how smooth this is to the left you have the shelf and you have the google search bar over here you have the app drawer this is basically the oneplus launcher top down view you do have all the notification tiles right so let's talk about the launcher first so if you long press over here and go to home settings and if you go to about phone the version is 5.1.5 general bug fixes you have options like add icon to home screen swipe down to access the notifications or quick settings shelf you can enable disable that so unfortunately google discover is not there or the google feed is not there you have quick search gestures notification dots you have icon pack options home screen layout and you can also access the hidden space right now apart from this as you can see over here the wallpaper is the basic oneplus wallpaper the live wallpaper it works really really well if you unlock it like this you see this beautiful live wallpaper animation and it works just fine moving on you have the weather widget and everything else all the things are available and the notification tiles you have a ton of notification tiles and for me it doesn't really make a lot of sense to go through each one of them the ones that matter are screen recorder screen casting you have all those styles available you also have the zen mode dark mode do not disturb so you know more or less everything that you will ever need is present in this operating system and that is the reason oneplus is known to have a great android operating system moving on let's talk about the screen recorder so if you click on always agree and you go to settings over here you have a ton of options but 
you don't really have the option to record internal and external audio together so that's on the part of oneplus nothing the developers could have done there now, apart from this you do have amazing recents which are based on android 11 at the bottom you have the icon and if you press and hold a particular application you have the option to lock it app info split screen and free form so those options are there and they work just great and at the bottom you have the clear all option now, apart from this as you can see over here the ui is pretty pretty clean and as you can see the animations over here the animations are just great there are no problems no stutters that you would see unlike miui or some roms which have stutters in the complete ui it works butter smooth it works perfectly fine the animations of this os is something that i have always liked from day one as you can see over here the weather app looking great in all its glory Important to mention this is Android 11 so you do have the Android 11 bubbles which are working just fine right now moving on what do we have on the main screen you have the volume slider which has a ton of options along with the output mode if you have a device connected like a Bluetooth device you can select where the audio output should go and you also have the power menu a typical android 11 power menu you can go ahead and enable the advanced reboot to directly take you to fast boot or recovery from here as well moving on if we talk about the gallery application this is the typical android 11 oxygen os 11 gallery that is available so you do get the new gallery in this particular update now let's take a dive into settings and see what all we have say the first option that we have is wi-fi if you go ahead and connect to any wi-fi network 5 gigahertz all the options working absolutely fine you would see that it is connected if you go to the settings you have an option to disconnect you have an option to make a choice whether you want to automatically reconnect or not wi-fi calling is working data usage sim and network vpn private dns all the options all the works even in the bluetooth menu everything is there screencasting is something i've tested and you will see that in today evening's you know live stream when we check the gaming performance moving on to an important aspect is display you have adaptive brightness sleep advanced now under advanced you have screen calibration where you can choose the colors and they work just fine you can hide the notch you can select the apps to display in full screen you have vision comfort reading mode dark mode vibrant color effect and you have the ambient display as well in which it will not work as a always on display but whenever you pick up the phone and stuff like that it will work you have the horizon light for incoming notifications so that makes your experience even better you have display size status bar customizations so you know all the works of the usual settings are available and they work smooth and perfect in customization you have the canvas mode in which you can just go ahead and maybe you know select an application and it creates a stencil of that for example if we go to camera over here that's me looking all tired say preview let's have a look by the way that picture is clicked from the gcam for this particular rom now as you can see it works absolutely fine and it will work on your always on display so that is another neat feature you have system icons icon pack font accent color clock on ambient light display so all the customization options are available over here now in sound and vibration you have live caption working like a boss system sounds where you can select what sorts of sounds you want you have touch vibration and you have a lot of vibration customization as well now moving on if we go to buttons and gestures you have navigation bar gestures three different options button the android 10 gestures and the navigation gestures button option long press to take a photo so you do have shortcuts there as well now moving on if you go to apps and notifications you have screen time and a ton of other options like app permissions and stuff where you can enable you know revoke permissions and stuff like that so all the android 11 goodness is present and it works absolutely fine you do have security and lock screen in which you have the fingerprint scanner working perfectly fine and face unlock is working let me answer your question before you ask this is not ir face unlock this is a normal front camera face unlock now talking about the battery over here yes this is a full review you would ask me how is the charging how is the battery how is the offline charging i'm gonna answer those one by one now first things first if you see over here 
We've had around three hours of screen on time and we still have 35% battery in this. I have played PUBG Mobile, I have used the camera, I have checked my mails, I have seen a couple of videos. So basically one day of mixed usage and you should get around four and a half to five hours of screen on time. And the phone has been unplugged in the last six hours. So the battery temperature is just fine. You do have the optimized charging op option, battery optimization. So if you don't have any app sending you notifications, you can check that over here. And as far as the charging is concerned, let me show you Accu battery real quick. Charging for me has been working just fine. It might not be, you know, ultra fast, just like, uh, you know, the 18 watt charger in MIUI. It's a little here and there, but it works absolutely fine. So by offline charging, what I mean to say is that the phone is switched off and it charges. For me, it has been working fine, but a few users have been reporting that it doesn't work for them and it keeps rebooting and stuff like that. I have not experienced that. All right. Now, moving on, talking about the gestures, you have double tap to, you know, sleep, double tap to wake, all of them working absolutely fine like a boss. And even with the live wallpaper, as I said earlier, I have been having good battery life. As I mentioned earlier, you do have the new Zen mode available, which works absolutely fine. So if you want to wind down, take a break from using your phone, that feature is working absolutely okay. Moving on, you will ask me what about gamers? But hey, before we get there, you do have digital well-being, right? So if you click on show your data, there you go. Digital well-being is working absolutely fine. You do have utilities in which you have the additional OnePlus features like OnePlus Switch, OnePlus Lab, you have DC dimming in OnePlus Lab, quick reply in landscape, app locker. Now in the app lock, you don't have face unlock. You have fingerprint unlock and you have the pin option. So unfortunately the face unlock is not available in app lock. Now apart from this, you just have your usual system and everything else, RAM boost. I think this would be enabled always. Yep. Anyways, we just have six gigs of RAM. And if you go to the app drawer, you will see over here that you have the games option wherein you can customize a ton of things. And if you go to settings, you will notice that you have so many options and you also have the Fnatic mode. It works absolutely fine. So you not only have a perfectly working screen recorder, you do have a gaming mode that is the Fnatic mode. Now we will talk about the security for using the phone as a daily driver. So first thing that we will check is the safety net. There you go. Safety net passes just fine. Next up, let's talk about the Google Play Store device certification. So let's go to settings. Let's go to bout. Over here, it does say that the device is not certified. I am not rooted. I have flashed the safety net fix. Still, we are seeing that, but that's okay because I've not had any issues using any banking applications or any apps at all. If we talk about the DRM info, it does show that the device is Widevine L1 certified, but in Amazon Prime Video, HD was not playing. So I'm pretty sure even in Netflix, HD video will not work. And at this point, pretty much Poco F1 users should give up on that hope because Poco's license has expired and it's been a while they have not renewed. So. There is only so much that I can expect from them. Now we have two important aspects left to cover up in this particular review. One is the camera and two is the performance. A part of the performance you will see in the gaming live stream, but I'll show you the numbers and let's talk about the camera over here. So we are using the G cam recommended by them. It works absolutely fine. You can see a few pictures that I've clicked over here. Pretty neat pictures. I'm not such a good photographer, but as you can see, portrait selfie and all the G cam options are working absolutely fine. Even the front camera is working as expected with this digital zoom sort of stuff. Portrait, night sight, all the features work as expected. As you can see over here, there you go. So the clarity is pretty insane. 4K 60 FPS video is working absolutely fine after doing some settings. If you want to know further info, you can join the phone ops telegram channel or oof gangs telegram channel you'll get a lot of info about the gcam over there now let's talk about the benchmark numbers we, you know this should not be something that should stop you or decide for you if you want to try this rom or not but i'll tell you this the performance around the rom overall is pretty insane it's pretty neat i'm not saying this rom doesn't have bugs it will have some quirks here and there some bugs here and there but that should not stop you from using this ROM because it is excellent. So let's get into it. So if we actually first go to gallery because I would want to share 
the thermal throttling result. Now it does say CPU throttle to 90% of its max performance and these numbers are amongst one of the best ROM numbers that I've seen as far as the thermal test is concerned. Moving on we will talk about the Antutu benchmark. Now I know to many the benchmark numbers will not appeal but if we have the tools available to measure performance why not go ahead and do that. 392,619 that's the score in Antutu for you and let's also go ahead and talk about Geekbench over here. So if you go to history over here, 424 single core, 2080 multi core, not the best number that you would expect but I will tell you this, while using the phone, while charging the phone, while gaming, while using the camera, banking application and watching some content apart from not getting HD, this is amazing. You have everything going for it. Oofgang have done a splendid job. This is not a paid review and I'm telling you give it a try and let me know what bugs you see. So let me know in the comment section what do you think about this in-depth review of Oxygen OS for the Poco Phone F1. Are you going to flash it or not? Until the next one, this is Kailash signing off at Phone Ops. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.